How do you market for your dropshipping store? What's the best way to do this? And what should your intent be behind your marketing plan? All this and more we're going to answer here in this video. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm Zach Hall. Make sure you stick around at the end of this video because I'm dropping my best tips for e-commerce marketing. All right, so first off, let's establish this. What is marketing? Marketing, to put it simply, is the promotion of selling a product or a service. Right? You don't say all right, so these are the primary sources of marketing I use on my stores. So we got social media marketing, we got search engine marketing, we have text message marketing, we have email marketing, search engine optimization, and most importantly, if you ask me, influence marketing. So let's start here. So what is social media marketing? Kind of gives it away in the name there. It's marketing on social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Next, I want to explain search engine marketing. Search engine marketing is when we put up ads on search engines like Facebook and Google and Bing. So people type in direct keyword phrases. And if we're targeting those keywords, our ads are going to be served to that person to keep it simple. Now, I'm bringing both of these up first because there's a big argument in the dropshipping community on which one should you do or which one's better search engine marketing or social media marketing. Now this is the side of the aisle I stand on with this. Social media marketing is better. The reason I'm saying this is because your money goes further. You're gonna get a lot more than just the sale. But don't get me wrong, social media marketing doesn't drive as much sales as direct marketing, but that's where a lot of stores are gonna fail. So many people fail in the dropshipping space because they only focus on making money and getting sales. Which, we'll explain that in a minute, but first, social media marketing, when people see your ads, they're only seeing your ads based on their interests or their behavior patterns of what they're doing online. So it's not like the person you're showing your ad to is looking to purchase that product from you at that given time. They just fit the bill of who you want to target with your ad. And then it's up to your ad from there to sell them on impulse from buying from you. Whereas on the flip side with search engine marketing, you can put up an ad on Google, they type in camera, like a specific brand of camera, then there's a good chance they're looking to search that product because they want to buy it. There's actually an intent there to purchase rather than it just matching an interest or a behavior pattern. Okay, then we have email marketing and text message marketing. Again, the descriptions for these literally lie right there in the names. Email marketing, text message marketing. You don't say but marketing with text message and email marketing can be an obstacle. All right, remember that video a couple back that I posted about the sales funnels? Of course you did, stupid question. You subscribe and you like all my videos, so I know you've seen it. Yeah, but sales funnels, that structure and the way that we laid all that stuff out is also going to apply to your email and your text message campaigns. They're automated flows that we're gonna set up in future videos. Don't skip ahead on this one. Watch the rest of this one because I got some important stuff I'm gonna bring out here and then we'll go over those later. Yeah, well those sales funnels apply to email and text message marketing too. But this is just an overview video, so we're not going to dive too deep into that. And then last but definitely not least, like I was saying before, we have influencer marketing. So influencer marketing is where you get endorsements from people or organizations to promote you out on their social media channels. So it's a subcategory of social media marketing, but it's kind of like its own entity within social media marketing. And it's an awesome way to get good quality traffic, usually for pretty fair prices. But instead of paying somebody else to endorse your brand, why not do it for yourself? Why not do it for yourself, do it for free, and grow your own following so you can advertise whatever you want to your following at any given time and it's not gonna cost you a dime. And that's exactly what I did, which was one of the most major breakthroughs I ever had with my success online. So once I flipped the script and I stopped focusing on getting sales and making money and I started focusing on building brand and building influence, that's when things went crazy for me. So that's why I say social media marketing trumps search engine marketing because your money goes so much further. Sure, you might not get as many sales, but with social media, you're gonna get more than just a sale. So with all of your marketing approaches, whatever platform you're looking at, whatever time in the future it is, you should be focusing on building your brand and building your social influence so you can advertise to your organic following at any time for free. Because look, nothing draws a crowd more than a crowd. So if you get a big amount of people talking about you and your brand, 
that other people are naturally just gonna swarm in like your brand's going out of style because everybody and their sister's talking about it. So what's SEO? SEO stands for search engine optimization. And this is such a broad subject, there's no way I can cover all this in one video. Again, it's just an overview video, so I want to give you an overview of SEO and how it's so vitally important to the success of your online business. Briefly, SEO is when we drive traffic from search engines to our landing pages of our websites for free. And the two main keys to SEO are keywords and backlinks. A keyword, you've probably heard of these, but nobody ever really explains what a keyword is. They just assume that you should know what it is. A keyword, in other words, is just another name for a search term. And backlinks are links on a web page, but they're linked to a different web page. So any link you see on any kind of website, if it links to a different website aside from the one that it's on, it's considered a backlink. And those are super important. So the way SEO works nowadays is you have to have relevant keywords associated with your web pages, and the more backlinks that are associated with your web page, meaning other websites backlinking your site to theirs, then the higher relevancy you're gonna have in search engines. So if you wanna get at the top of search results, you need to have a bunch of backlinks on your websites and relevant keywords within the pages. So keywords, like we said before, is an alternate term to explain what a search term is. Keywords are gonna tell the search engines where to show your web page, and the backlinks are gonna tell the search engines how high your web page should be in the search results but that's not the way SEO always has worked. So to understand SEO better, I'm gonna give you a background on how it used to operate. So SEO, the old way, used to display people in the top of search results based on keywords alone that were on the page. So yeah, people literally could have just flooded their web pages with the keywords and they would be in the top of search results. Over time, as people got smarter and smarter and they abused this more and more and started manipulating the search engine results, um, pretty much effortlessly, the search engines really had no choice but to change the way it all worked. All backlinks, by the way, they're not created equally. Backlinks all have different qualities associated with them. So obviously you want really high quality backlinks associated with your web pages rather than low quality. The better quality the backlinks that are associated with your page are, the higher you're gonna display in the search results. All right, actually low key, a really good way that you can get backlinks when you're starting off a business or you're trying to grow your SEO is right through Twitter. Twitter backlinks, they're not really super strong backlinks, but any backlink is better than no backlink. So what you can do is you can create a post on Twitter, a tweet, and within the post, you put the link to your web page and you get people to retweet it. Every single one of those retweets counts as a backlink because it's your web page link being associated to multiple different other web pages. So when you're first starting off, where do you market first? Like we stated before, Facebook and Instagram right now are the two top influential places on the internet that you need to be building your brand and you have to be building your influence if you want to have massive success online. And just to recover it again, search engine marketing will drive more sales, but social media marketing is going to get you way more for your money. And another tip I want to drop here, and I'm not going to go into great detail with this because this is an overview video. Check out my other videos that go into depth on this stuff. But make sure you claim your business listing and your search council, both of those, on all the top search engines on the internet because there is massive, massive benefits to doing that. So when it comes to online marketing, one of the most important factors that you have to keep your eye on is a thing called CPM, cost per milli, or in other words, it's cost per thousand views. This is how us as marketers measure the cost of our ads. As the world and the market changes, so will the world of marketing. So right now when I'm recording this, Facebook and Instagram are two really awesome platforms to run online ads because the CPM cost is really, really, really low compared to other places. Plus you can target people in insane detail. But like I just said, as the world changes, so will the world of marketing. So if there's a low cost on CPM on average for the platform, if you can target people in great detail, and there's a large amount of people on a platform to advertise to, those are the three major things right there that you have to look for when you're looking to market on new platforms in the future. And hey, lastly, if you're not gonna take anything else away from this video, take this. Not every single ad that you run is gonna be a good, profitable, working ad. So never try and force the thing to work. If it's a bad ad, 
Don't dig yourself into a deeper hole. Cut your losses. There's no point in making a bad situation worse. But we're going to wrap it up right there, guys. This is just an overview video. Make sure you go over to my channel. Check out the other videos I have that are going to go way more in depth on all the details, everything I laid out in this video here, plus a heck of a lot more. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I want to take you guys along with this journey. I mean, we're out here killing the dropshipping game and you guys need to be here to watch it all unfold. But I want to know down in the comment section, what's your biggest hurdle with marketing for your dropshipping store? Drop that below and I'm going to try to get back to you as soon as I can with an answer. Like and subscribe to the channel here. Make sure you turn on that bell so you get notified every single time we put a new video up. If you like what we put out today, Give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to share this with your network if you want to see them be successful too. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you over on the next video.